Welcome, it's Cast On Day. Yay! We're casting on today for the Scandi Bloom Cowl, and it's a super fun thing to knit. It's not a big project if it's warm where you are, so you don't have a bunch of sweater knitting on your lap. But what I want to show you today is two different ways to cast on. So the way that I'm going to demonstrate today is the way that is mentioned in Heather's pattern and the way that she prefers to cast on. And so I'm going to show you that today. And then I'm also going to put a link in the video description down below to a provisional cast on that uses a crochet hook. And I show you two different ways to do the crochet hook method in that other video. So I'll put that in the link. I'll put that link in the video description down below if you're interested in that. Um, what I found super interesting that I didn't even realize was Heather's preferred method of casting on using um, not not using a crochet hook is the same way that I cast on for my swatch cast on. The difference is that rather than using rather than using your working yarn and the foundation yarn, you're using the working yarn and then like a barber cord or a uh, you know, another cable from a needle or something like that, where then you can put your needles on the barber cord and draw it through your live stitches or simply have more than one set of needles with a stopper for your live stitches. That's the, but it's exactly the same motion as my swatch cast on if you've watched that video. So I thought that was super interesting. I didn't even realize that until the other day and I was like, well, that's the same thing, wow. <laughs> Fantastic, so that will certainly be my new method going forward. Don't need the crochet hook, but if that is your preference, that's totally fine. And I do have a tutorial for that as well. Again, all the links for everything, including the pattern, where you can buy the yarn, all that's down in the video description. Now, Heather is on vacation this week for her anniversary, so happy anniversary to her. She will be back with a shop update with some more kits and stuff uh, next Monday the 12th. So before everybody starts leaving a bunch of comments down below and in the groups, that is the plan. Heather will be back and have more kits for you to order. You're certainly welcome to knit from Stash. We'll have prizes and things. There's uh, Ravelry group. All the details are in the in the vlog that I made with her, and I'll put that in the video description also. There will be a Scandi Bloom Cowl playlist on the channel, so you can access everything all in one place. All right, before we get started with the tutorials, I want to give a big thank you to four new patrons in the last week or so. Thanks for joining the patron family and helping support the channel, keep these videos coming to you each and every week. And the first person, they just left their first initial. So thanks to L from Pennsylvania. Also, thanks so much to Carol from Maryland. Also, Anne from Louisiana. And a big shout out also to Melinda. We had some issues with her account. Uh, Patreon, I don't know. There was a mix up. Anyway, thanks to Melinda for hanging in there. She's been a patron for a while, but I just wanted to publicly say Thank you for your continued support and hanging in there with some computer snafu. If you want to see what I offer over on patreon.com, we have uh, discounts on classes and events, patron only content. So check it out. Patreon.com forward slash Pearl together. Also, there's a link down below. Okay, let's get started with our cast on. Okay, the first thing I want to do is give you an overview of what we're going to do and why. So this is my work in progress, and when I began, I cast on onto this purple cord. This is, a, I think, a generic version of the, the barber cord, and if you're not sure what that is, it's just a, a silicone cord that's hollow, like a, big, like a little tube. And the point of it is, once you're finished and you want to access your live stitches on this provisional cast on, you can just put the cord onto the tip of a needle... So you would just slide the cord onto this needle and you know mash it on there as far as you can. And then when you pull, it, it tightens down. So I should have mashed it on there more. So you just you push it on there as far as you can. And then when you pull the other end of the cord, you can feed your needle through there. So then you have a, a needle on your live stitches. So if you don't have an extra cable or an extra needle of the same size that you're using for your knitting. You could certainly use waste yarn, you could use this cord, but whatever, I'm gonna show you how to cast onto either waste yarn, a cord, or a different cable. So I have these uh, these squishy 
needle tip covers on here. This is an actual uh, chow goo needle, an extra one that I'm going to cast onto to show you. And so then I could just, it's the same size as what I'm using to knit with. So I could simply start knitting with the exact same thing. So if you have a duplicate needle, that's definitely the way to go. I'm going to use this a uh, little bit bigger yarn so you can see what I'm doing. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a slip knot. Pretty easy, right? Just make a slip knot and I'm going to put it onto my cord. Then I'm going to have my working yarn coming toward the top. Now what I like to do is have my yarn going off on the left and I like to tension it just in the same way as if I were crocheting, which I don't crochet very well, but just tension that however you know you could do it however you want to, but it needs to come over your left finger. I'm going to have the yarn coming over the top of my right working needle as if I'm starting with a yarn over. That's actually going to act as your first stitch. Then I'm going to bring the needle toward me around, up through the center, over the back, and all the way around. And that created another stitch. What I'm going to do here is, is since this wants to roll over, your cable wants to roll over the top, just hang on to that with your middle and thumb for a few minutes. Next thing I'm going to do is a yarn over, okay? And that counts as a stitch. So then we're going to do our motion again. Toward you, up through the center, over the back, all the way around, yarn over. Okay, let's do it again. Toward you, up through the center, all the way around, yarn over. Okay, so you can see how many stitches we have going here now. The yarn overs count as a stitch, so we have two, four, six, seven. When we finish, when we get to the end, since that's a yarn over, when we finish and we get toward the end, we won't do the yarn over, okay? So then if you so if you need an even number of stitches, and we do for this Candy Bloom Cal, you won't do the yarn over at the end. All right, toward you, up through the center, around the back, all the way around, yarn over. Toward you, up through the middle, over the back, all the way around, yarn over. Toward you, up through the center, over the back, all the way around, yarn over. Let's do one more. Toward you, up through the center, over the back, all the way around, and now let's not do the yarn over, and I'll show you how to be, you're gonna begin to knit. Now you have your working yarn coming off the back, so pinch that, so that you can hang on to everything and then turn your work around. Just do a 180 because now if you're using magic loops, a magic loop, you want to be able to start knitting. Your yarn's coming off the top actually or the bottom, but we're going to hold, we're going to hold this down. So the yarn's coming down right now. And I'm going to take my ball of yarn to the right because we're going to start knitting. So you have the other working. This is the other part of this needle. And I've got my cord here. So we're just going to leave that the way it is. I don't like these particular needles because they have too much memory in the cord and it's annoying and it flips up all over. But, okay, the yarn's coming off the bottom. So what I'm going to do is go in as if to knit. I'm, I'm holding this taut. And I'm going to bring this up over the cord here. And I'm going to knit just like normal. And you're going to knit... Up all the way across. And that's how you're gonna do your foundation row, your first row. You're gonna knit your way back. And you're probably wondering, well, this is a cowl, how am I gonna join in the round? I'll show you. It's very simple, you're just gonna knit. You're not gonna tie a knot, you're not gonna do anything, you're just gonna knit. So as I knit this, it feels really loose, and, and it is. You'll have the chance to kind of tighten that up a little bit. I am holding this yarn pretty pretty tight, actually, this so that I can kind of snug up my stitches as I go and keep some tension there. But you can see that what I've done here is created my first my first row of stitches. So this the loops that are on the needle are your first row. When I get to the end, I'll have my slip knot and I can uh, pull on that a little bit as well. So there's my last stitch 
and I have my slip knot, which you can leave that for the moment. Okay, this is going to end up being a magic loop situation. So if I were knitting in the round, and I haven't cast on that many stitches, I would simply do the magic, you know, I would take this down here, split for my magic loop like you normally would, or your DPNs or whatever, and then I would just start knitting in the round. Just simply start knitting. And what that's going to look like is it's a little loose and wonky, as you can see on my cords, but I will be able to tighten that up some with the tails. This was my slip knot, and you can see things are a little loose and messy, but I'll be able to adjust that. When I go back and pick up these stitches, I'll be able to clean that up. Don't worry too much about it. It'll be fine. So I hope that helps and dissuades a little bit of the worry about that. It's a super handy way to, to start a provisional cast on because you've already got your cable on there. If you don't have enough needles, just use whatever. Tie rubber bands around, you know, where the junction is. If you didn't have these the same size needle, you could always just put some rubber bands or like a binder clip right here simply to keep your stitches from falling off as you're putting things in and out of your project bag or, or whatever. I did just happen to have another set of, of tips that were the same size as what I'm working with. And so that'll, that'll work. Okay. I hope you found that helpful. It is a little fussy when you join in the round and then you're dealing with your tails and then the cords and then your two color work ends, you know, your working yarns plus the tails and the corns. It's a little fussy and it is like a little, you know, kind of messy in the beginning. But once you get it started, it'll become clear what's going on. So just have a little patience with yourself. Take it slow. It's only one stitch at a time. And later on today, I'm going to upload another video about some tips for managing your yarn, dealing, keeping your tension consistent, dealing with your floats at the needle juncture. That's important. So watch for that later on today. Okay, and also, as Heather mentioned in our vlog post about the knit along, if you have any questions at all, uh, please do not email or direct message me because your question may be the same question someone else has. So it's super help helpful if you'll post in the Ravelry group. I'll be checking that several times a day. You can also post in the Facebook Pearl Together group if you want to. You can leave a comment down below in the video here. So any of those things, I will see all of those. Uh, you can certainly tag me, but there's a wealth of information and a, a lot of experienced knitters in all of those places. But I will absolutely be checking all of that several times a day. So if you have questions, type them out. Other people can benefit from the question and answers in all of those places. All right. Thanks again for joining the Knit Along. It's going to be a lot of fun and it's a really neat project.